What's up, everybody? So, guys, I just want to first and foremost say I can fit into these pants that I got from the thrift store that I originally could not wear. Then I went plant-based for about a month, and now I can wear them. So, I do feel pretty good. Um, I just wanted to come on and talk a little bit about, again, something that's been very big in my life since birth. And it's becoming very big in my life as of recently because I'm starting to realize this is one of those, the same way you have a generational curse, I feel like you have like this generational power. You have some people in their family, they are, their, their family could be more prophetic, their family could be um, more clairvoyant. It's just like certain lines, certain bloodlines, they can do a bit, um, they have a, a certain power about themselves. And one of my powers in my family is, is prayer, being able to communicate with spirit, being able to speak with spirit. Um, prayer is essentially just communicating again with spirit, with God, and belief that something outside of you or something higher than you can change your life for the better, for you. Now, I was just doing a little bit of research into the word prayer and I learned a couple of things. Say hello to Sola because he's about to go on the floor. The word prayer in its Latin form is called procari. P-R-E-C-A-R-I. Now, procari means or translates to obtain by begging. Now, when I think about what it means to beg in the energy of a beggar, I think of a vampire, I think of a leech, I think of something parasitic, I think of something draining, something um, with no stability, um, no finances. And then I think, why would you want to approach spirit or even your God that way? Now for us sensual occultists, and I'm going to make a video going into detail about essential occultists and to know if you are one or if you are wanting to become one, but for us sensual occultists, we don't dwell in the energy of a beggar. And one thing we don't do is approach our goddesses or our gods or our spirits alone out of the energy of a beggar because one, that's disrespectful to them. As a sensual occultist, we don't pray, we don't beg, we divine, we meditate, we manifest, we affirm, we petition, we devote because we're not beggars. We're not beggars, we're divine manifestors. We attract everything that we want. We align ourselves with what it is that we want and we obtain it. Now. I said in my write-up on prayer, and you know pretty much what prayer, prayer is, that to approach prayer more emotional than intentional will cause you to be receptive to spiritual attacks. Now, why? When you are praying, just like when you are meditating, you are opening portals. Now, if you can actually just take a look around and truly see everything that's inside of the room around you, everything that's inside of the room around us right now, you'll know, whoa, there's a lot of fucking spirits in here. There are. Just a lot of random spirits just sitting around. They can be familiar spirits. They can be ancestral spirits. They can be leeching spirits. They can just be passerby spirits. All types of spirits just lingering around with you. Just sitting right here, sitting right on top of you. It's just spirits everywhere. So throughout your every day-to-day -day life, everything you say and you do is seen and heard and captured by these spirits. So let's say, for instance, you're upset because your car broke down. You're so emotional, you're just upset, you don't know how you're gonna get to work and make your money and pay your bills. Everything just seems to be fucking up. This is when you decide to go pray to your God. You haven't protected yourself, you haven't set any intentions, you're just upset, you're looking for a quick fix and you're taking all of your emotions and you're pouring it into this open portal full of entities. What's happening is you have a lot of, like I said, parasitic and leeching entities just Posted up around you, waiting for the perfect opportunity to come in and feed off of you, if they have not already been doing so. And oftentimes, these leeching parasitic entities can pose 
themselves as divine beings, meaning they can pose themselves as whatever spirit you thought you were praying to, they will fix your situation momentarily. And then you notice something else is going to fuck up to put you back in that situation to where you have to pray again and feed this entity. What this entity is doing is trying to keep you in a constant cycle so that it can stay fit. That's why it's very important you approach spirit with more intention than emotion. Because when you're intentional, you have a more clear, direct focus and thought pattern as to what you want to do and how it's going to happen. When you're intentional, you don't just approach your spirit or your God when something's fucked up. Intentional devotional practices or intentional prayer practices, that's the word that you want to use. This is something that you do every day. You don't pick and choose when to approach your God. You don't pick and choose when to approach your spirits. You approach them and you converse with them on a day-to-day -day basis. You create a schedule when you're going to work with your spirits, how you're going to divine with your spirits, how you're going to speak with your God, when you're going to speak with your God, about what. You create space and you create time and you create intentions to make this very intentional and meaningful to your God, especially if you truly respect your God. Especially if you truly respect your God. Now, like I said, I can't speak for everybody, you know. I know a lot of, you know, Christians, and I'm trying to, you know, talk about nobody and stuff like that. But I know a lot of Christians, you know, they they tend to say stuff like, well, God knows my heart. And, and God knows me. You know, you can't judge me because God knows me. Well, how the fuck do you know that? God knows your heart. What's in your heart that God knows? And, and if all that goodness is in your heart, how come it's not reflected on the outside? And how come you can't show that gratitude towards your God? Oh, God knows my heart. I mean, so that's your excuse and your cop out for not showing reverence to your spirits. That's your excuse? They know your heart? Are you sure? Are you positive? We can really limit a lot of the freak accidents that happen in our everyday life. Our car is just messing up, never having money, never being able to do this, always stressed out. We can really eliminate a lot of that by creating daily devotional practices, by creating spaces every day or every other day. It doesn't have to be every day to where we're in communication with our spirits constantly via meditation. It can be in affirmations. You can just be sitting with your spirits. It doesn't matter. But being in constant communication with your spirits is very, very important to one, spiritual evolution. That's number one. Two, when you talk with your spirits and y'all tight, they want to do stuff for you. You know what I'm saying? They want to protect you. They want to hold you down. They want to do everything. So all of these freak accidents, they're not going to happen as much. But what is going to happen, everything is going to align itself perfectly for you. Everything is going to align itself perfectly for you. Why? Because your spirits know who you are. You have a relationship with them. It's not just, oh, they know my heart. Because why in the fuck am I going to favor a child of mine who doesn't even speak to me over the child that does speak to me? Who the fuck are you? So we just have to be very intentional and mindful when approaching spirit. Whenever we're going into communication with spirit, you need to be very, very intentional. Because at the end of the day, these spirits have their own agendas. They have their own agendas. So if we're not careful, we will be a part of that motherfucker. Seriously. I was telling a friend of mine, I said, if your God or your spirits require you to beg them, then you probably don't want to work with them. If they require you to be a slave, if they require you to be a rag doll, then why are you working with them? See, the entities and the spirits in my core are very divine beings, they're very righteous beings, so one thing that I cannot do is approach them anything less than that. You know, when I approach my spirit, I have to come completely correct. Completely correct. Intentions have to be aligned. Everything has to be aligned. I can't, my King Bonding spirits, I can't approach them drunk. I can't approach them, I may be high because I smoke with my spirits, but I can't approach them too inebriated to the point to where I make myself receptive to any agenda that they may have. Because at the end of the day, like my King Bonding spirits, they have their own agendas. Yeah, they work with me. 
But let me fuck up. Let me not be intentional. Let me try and lie to myself and to spirit. Because one thing about spirit, spirit knows everything. I can sit here and I can fight spirit. But spirit is going to motherfucking do what spirit wants to do. So I might as well just follow suit. And one thing I'm learning now as a divine sensual occultist is truly how to deal with spirit. And I was in prayer earlier this morning. I was doing some breathwork meditation. And I was really tuning in and paying attention to where my emotions and where everything was going. My intentions was to let go of everything that did not serve me and that was blocking my sensuality. I felt all these emotions just rise in my face. And the guided meditation on the person that was leading it said release. And that's when everything that I began to feel came up. The emotions that was sitting right there in my face came up. I came into that prayer session with intentions to release. Spirit brought up what it was, the emotions that it wanted me to release. Once I, once I let it surface and I began to cry and I began to speak to myself, and I'm going to make another video about speaking to yourself and calling up things inside of you that is not serving. I began to speak to myself and I began to speak to what it was that was swelling in my face. It was fear. I dwell a lot in fear and it was swelling up in my face and it wanted to be released. And I had to tell myself, I sat there and I said, I released this fear. You have no home within my body. You cannot be here. And I just began to just wail, just wail, releasing everything. But I kept my intentions clear because even though I'm crying, I'm not crying from a place of anger and chaos no i'm crying from a place of release i want to release because i asked i came in here with the intentions to release so that is what i'm doing so being intentional is very important when starting or going into communication with spirit and my blunt is rolled at the end of the video and my lighter doesn't work thank you guys so much for watching i really hope you guys have and enjoyed this video um, again I am going to make another video going in about how to call up things that are inside of you so that you can live a better life if you like this video please like comment and subscribe and I will see you next time bye